Yo, Rana, and welcome to FM Tahiti. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, we've come back for the next set of matches against the Lagunas in the league and Ruru 2 in the cup final. They seem to have rearranged some of the... Um, or well, they've shifted the final slightly, so I thought it was going to be the final then to buy, but they've they've moved that around. Um, so we've got the league game first, which is good, because apparently the title race is hotting up. And it's wide open, <laughs> according to to this. I've no, I don't think I've ever seen this many teams in this sort of title race hot sup news item uh, before. So we're top with thirty four, and then we've got three teams on thirty one: Moria, Skybrights, Huhin Eels. Then we've got Bora Bora, Taha, Vahanga Vines are one point each less as it goes down, and then Moto one. I don't think they're I think Moto won Chevres or Excelsior, you know, realistically in this for the last five games. Um, this is going to be the key match for us in our own kind of internal battle, which I mentioned before. But we can add to it. So we're going against the Tubai Lagunas, also known as Lagoonies. Um, I really like their kit and I like their badge. Um, it's just the Goonies font from the film, which is an amazing film. If you've uh, not seen it, you should do. Right, so cross we've got to take off. Oh no. Oh, oh there we go. Munia can go in. So we don't want to play cross because I think cross is the one with the contracts. Yeah. He's got a clause in there, which means if he plays any more football, we will offer him a contract. So I'd rather just not. I would literally at this point rather lose a few matches I might not normally lose because I don't have him on the bench then give him that contract extension we don't have the money for 33 going on 34 year old players to suddenly just waste the club they've got an interesting formation Diamond Nara there I'm confident that we're going to win this one even if the team aren't oh no handshake Oh, come on. Tripped above themselves and Dupuis just ran in and made it worse. Burra. Dupuis, who's there? He's onside, apparently. See, he's, he's eager, is Dupuis. He's not going to be playing for us next season, but he is eager. Yeah, I guess technically he went back and then he stepped forwards. Do we have this bit up so we can see what's going on? I don't think Van Gervain's going to drop any points. They're playing quite well at the moment. Oh no. It's us. We're doing the point dropping. Michael Wallace. Now that's a name I remember. If you remember the wag, Wallace and Gerard, I think that's the same Wallace. Australese it is, it's him. That's his career gone. So left us, went to Tupai. Got a handful of goals. Went to the Lagunas and has been there for a while. The goals. He's not prolific anymore. But was he prolific when he was with us? He was better. Yeah. Maybe I can get him back. He did play quite well with um that target man pressing forward combo but he was the target man for that we don't play target man anymore there we go Chabert getting the lead back for us Van Gervain still drawing Savage Savage really but you know Savage that'll do they messed up it Something about their formation and their core, uh, their kickoff routine really means they don't do well there. Space too close against Chabert. Oh, he was shoved. There's no need to shove him because he wasn't going anywhere. He was stepping up. Cornetti again. He does it. Hopefully these, go these six goals will make him a more appealing prospect to whichever team is going to pick him up, because it's not going to be us if we can help it. So many of these players, they don't realise it, but they're on the way out. They are not sticking around with us. 
feel a little bit mean about that, but I was thinking about maybe offering a contract to Murnier as well because he's actually played quite well. Burra, Bon. Oh, that one too didn't go as well as planned. Little Wallace. Almost a good save. Like he did still flap at it a bit, but he did also still save it, so you know. Apparently some of our players have been played up position and our assistant manager's worried about that. The season's three quarters of the way done. They've always been playing in the wrong position. That's one of the key th oh good good tackle. Which Naran that is. Yeah, one of the things about football manager is of something I I've kind of increasingly realized as the versions have gone on, is that a player doesn't have to be a natural in a particular position to play well. In fact they don't even have to be able to play that position to play well. There's a bit of a cost to it. But I remember, go on, get it in. There we go. That's that's as one. So it's done, I think. But yeah, it used to be. I remember from um, the original kind of championship manager. There was a guide, like the Prima guide, that gave you you know tips about tactics and players and bargains and stuff like that. And it was for like. Championship Manager 99-2000, uh, which is one of the ones I first played. I think it was 97-98 I first played, but then it was 99-2000, which was the big one for me. And one of the things in there basically said, the further you get away from your ideal position, the bigger the percentage sort of hit in terms of performance that you get. So if you had a midfielder who's playing in attacking midfield, it's about 10%. If you got them playing as a striker, it's about 20%. So it's kind of the further you move them backwards and forwards, the more it changes. Good goal by Ben Thomas. Five one and a half times, all right. Not a bad kick there. So yeah, because of that kind of tip, it's kind of stuck with me, and I was really kind of afraid to play plays out positions. I just thought they're not going to do well. If you've already got a bad player and suddenly they're taking a 20%, 25% hit because they're in the wrong position, it's like, I won't bother. I'd rather just have a bad player in the right position than a good player in the wrong position, that kind of thing. But actually, it really doesn't matter. It's the attributes that are the key thing. I've seen it on some of, uh, some of the sort of saves and blogs by other people where I can't send him off, 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 off. Oh, he goes. Which Naran is that? Jordan Naran. He used to play for uh, Ruru 2. He used to play for me. Done us another favour. Not that we really needed it. 5 1 already. Well, it's still dangerous there. See, so, yeah, I've seen some sort of blogs and videos and things like that by um, other people in the FN community about training players into different sort of positions, about getting the right attributes for that position and setting it up. And one of the things I've been tempted to do in the past is whenever I've been using like a target man, and I've done it for one of my offline saves, is if my target man strike is injured, that's fine. Instead, I'm going to just bring on my uh, six or five center back because he's got the heading score that he needs. That was an interesting goal. A crowd that that ball manages to get through. Again, that's poor defending. I think it's even though I'm taking advantage of it, this is increasingly becoming a bit of a, a bugbear for me in that it's not so much that crosses are very effective and they're overpowered, it's the fact that those kind of more square crosses really, really make the um, defences struggle. They step out at the wrong time completely for them. Interesting shot. We're making some subs to keep some players fresh, I think. Although both the strikers are potentially on a hat trick, so they're going to have to stay on for a little bit. Offside, yeah, definitely offside for that one.
Right then. I don't care that they're both on a hat trick. I need them to play against the humpbacks. I hope I got a news item in um for the mutineer trophy after the last match saying we now had the record for the worst discipline for the most you know yellow cards most red cards um beating the previous record that had been set by the humpbacks <laughs> where we were managing them so we've got a definite style i don't think i've played a single tactic in this version of football manager where i've not had get stuck in on but variance in terms of there we go Seven. They're already dead. We should stop. Again, kind of from a set piece. Yeah, we play violently if we need to. And I think I've mentioned this in an older video before, but one of the styles of football I really wanted to kind of get my team playing uh, earlier on in the save as well, I've been trying to do it in my kind of offline save too, is that kind of Wimbledon crazy gang. So not simply just long ball, but intimidating long ball. The ball goes up in the air and the opposition have half an eye on where the ball's coming down and half an eye on whether they're going to get smashed by an elbow. Ah, could have done without conceding, but I think 70 will still do the trick. But yeah, I wanted that violent, psychopathic, intimidating sort of fashion hours, this weird kind of violent martial artist up front. But it's really hard to get that full package in the game, but what you can get in is like the crunching tackles sometimes. Combination of aggression, bravery, likes to dive in, plus get stuck in. Can really do the job. So there we go. 7-2, see what's going on in the rest of the um, league, see what the latest scores were here before the um, next one. So the Hangar Vines drop points, so they have 12 points left, which takes them to 40 that they could get. If we win our next game and then draw one, a win and a draw is all we need to get it no matter what our result against the Hangar Vines is. If they don't beat us, then also that's going to affect them. So we're in a good position, confident. I'll come back in a second or two for the Humpbacks game. It's here. It's time. Time for the final of the Mutineer Trophy against the Humpbacks. And yeah, I've, I've, I'm pretty much getting ready just to be completely thumped by them because I know how good they were for us. Um, but it's our first final, historic for us no matter what happens. Um, our team is exactly the same as the one that's just come back from beating the Lagunas 7-2. Okay, let's have a look at this. Slightly different tactic from the one we were used to playing. Very different squads. They've got Alex O'Brien Played in the under 23s against us, but has got 10 league goals this season. He's alright. Um, Gerard, who we know and love. This superb record. Manuel, who played on the left for us, but never really got to play for us, but somehow still has two OCL med winning medals. Tobin, who we never really gave a chance to, apart from a few matches here and there, looks terrible. Honestly, like we learned him out a lot and he played well, but I think functionally he was terrible. Hersey got potential Huck, Sasha Huck, who we called up, who's more of a defender really, or we played him. Twigs the right back, who they're playing on the left. Cowick was our backup, who had potential, who we played against in the under 23s. Palanthorpe was also meant to be good, but we had better at the time. And Delmas. Played for us for Marquesa when we were national manager and they managed to sign him, who's quite good. Um, and then they've got this guy, Oram, in net, who's 17. So actually, let's look at their bench. What are they doing? 
Where's Andre? Where's Yanin? Where's Daluin? Where's Beauvalet? Where's McIntyre? Why, why is Twig here? We, when we left the squad, they had about four left backs. Right. Avenge them. Don't know what happened the last time the wings actually played them. Let's shake their hands. Thank you for ruining my squad. We're playing at the Humpbacks. A lovely little stadium. Sun's out. Sun's out, guns out. This is confusing because of the kit. We'll see. I think they've actually put out a very weak squad. A surprisingly weak squad. And I don't know if that just represents how little they care about the cup. Because we always put out a reasonably strong squad in it, but the board didn't care about it. I don't think they ever really cared about it. It's got such a low reputation. It's just a, a bragging rights and entry into Shield of Pride. Oh, Gerard's away. Oh, skewed it. I'm not surprised they're playing Gerard. Not because he's not any good. He is, but they've not been playing him much this season. Manuel whips it in. Gerard. Palmthorpe bobbles in. That's a soft goal. That is soft, considering. Yeah, I'm pleased for him, but... That's Ruiz. That is Ruiz's fault. You could have got rid of that. Got much in the way of options on the bench, so if the squad that's out there don't do the job, I think anyone will. It's a very quiet game. Might be the case that they're better than us, but still not fantastic. So better by enough to keep us under control, basically. Oh, I was expecting there'd be more in the way of highlights, Manuel. Persig. That is terrible keeping. Abs yeah, he he's going to have to take the blame for that. I mean... <laughs> yeah. I mean, our defenders could have been a bit quicker on their, their toes, but ultimately that was an easy one to save, and he has cocked it up. Two goals down. We've done pretty much nothing. Like, um, all the highlights have been the humpbacks. Unless there's not been many, they have all been for them. Right, what we're going to say? Shout at them a bit. Bring any of these guys on. Did not let me click on him. Just because he's on the bench. He's kind of rubbish. He too is kind of rubbish. Just carry on. Let's see if the shouting does anything. Okay, another highlight. Gerard just managed to get away from O'Brien there. It's disappointing we're not playing well, but it's kind of it's slightly reassuring to see there is a gap at some point between qualities and teams. So we've done well against teams like Feral Cats and Takaro Terrors. They're probably the bigger sides in the leagues above us that we've played, and we beat them comfortably. But then there's this kind of gap again to the humpbacks, those kind of teams where they're they're good. Let's bring on two new strikers. Jawine on for the left. Plenty of fans at the Rotary Reef. I think it's called the drop off. Stadium, I can't even remember. That is terrible. <laughs> yeah, off he goes. 
I mean, we're not going to win anyway, referee. You might as well leave them on. But <sighs> we just move him to the middle there for symmetry's sake. Can we do anything? Any kind of pride to be salvaged from this? Oh, go on. Pomat's through. And he scores. That was actually a good... What's Dean doing? Good ball through by Dean and a reasonable finish by Pomat there. Oh, there you go. Sets him off. So that's something. I'd be a man down. I don't think we're going to get anything extra from this. I think that is a consolation goal if ever there was. I have nothing else I can do substitute-wise. I think technically you do get extra substitutes in the um, Mutiny Trophy games. It's not just three, but the only other player I've got is a keeper. So that's not happening. Akol. The show doesn't cock it up this time. Go long. It's our last opportunity. Yeah, it's too long. There we go. 2-1. The scoreline makes it look like we put up a fight. In reality, we didn't. But they also didn't thrash us. I thought we might get pumped completely there. But actually, that was respectable. Um, so our first final with the Wings. And it's our first loss. But it is against... It's bittersweet because it's against the humpbacks. But at least, you know, it's against a good team. We know what that squad's like, what that club's like. They did put out a weaker squad and still beat us. Um, but that's just because their manager isn't doing a good job, I don't think. So a bit of defeat. A bit sad. But nothing. That was completely unexpected. So... We'll come back for the next match, which is going to be against Uapoa. So I'm going to play the Uapoa and the Vahanga Vines one in the next episode, because I think in theory, if we win against Uapoa and Vahanga Vines lose or drop points, then I think we might be in a position where we will finish above them. And if they you know, keep pace with us and they win and we win against Uapoa, then it'll be against them that he becomes the decider about who's going to finish above, so who effectively is going to get promoted. And then the title race is going to come down to these last two ones. There might be two episodes in this, potentially, this stage. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Um, we got to see the humpbacks. Nice to go down memory lane slightly and visit the stadium again, uh, but we, we lost. Uh, but eventually, the next time we play against them, I think we'll give them a much better match we didn't embarrass ourselves at the very least. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.